This is people's favorite musical. Dear Evan Hansen is about a possibly agoraphobic high school student played by a college alumnus with serious social anxiety. Evan's therapy assignment is picked up by a kid named Connor Murphy, who is so distraught by the idea that Evan has been perving on his sister, Zoe, that Connor decides to end it all. How? No one knows, but it isn't important, so just go with it. Connor's parents find the assignment, and the mom thinks that Connor wrote the letter to Evan. Then Evan's anxiety prevents him from speaking up, and instead he decides to lie about everything, gaining him fame, family, and the girl next door. So explain to me how I'm supposed to care for this kid at all. The acronym for this film best relates the intelligence of some of these characters. Everyone has a d moment. Connor's dad questions if Connor even wrote the note, but the mom pushes that Connor did, so d At the dinner, Zoe calls out Evan on ever hanging out with Connor, since the only time she saw them together is when he yelled at them the other day. But Evan placates to their emotions, so d And Evan's web of lies is the biggest smooth brain d of them all. He strings his green grieving family along like ghosts in a James Wan film. It isn't just the family, Evan has convinced the school and countless people online of this friendship with Connor and uses it to his advantage to get both the girl and family he's always wanted. If this doesn't tell you how nuts Evan is, then the big reveal towards the end will solidify that this kid could have ended up on an episode of Criminal Minds. Another glaring issue is the lack of information. There is detail missing like redacted government documents. For example, take Connor. We are led to believe that Evan's therapy assignment put Push Connor over the edge. If this is the case, then why was it found on his person and not thrown away or destroyed? For that matter, how did he go out? This detail matters because suicide is deliberate, and I don't buy that Connor would have ever kept Evan's letter in his final moments of distress. Not only that, we eventually learn Connor was in rehab. Rehab for what? Drugs? Drinking? Then? Why didn't this information come up before when people actually questioned the so-called friendship? I hate to say it, but this film needed another 30 minutes. That's all on top of a pace so slow, Musk will probably colonize Mars first. I thought we reached the conclusion after a big musical number, then checked my watch to find only an hour had passed. Good lord, I thought the tortoise joke was accurate in the cop shop review. Fuck it, here? Kneecap him. Cut out all the unnecessary bloat, remove the melodramatic songs that don't engage the audience, and streamline the film so I'm not left as confused as the weekend in the woods. Can he sing at least, Albelio? Yes? Listen, I ain't got musical talent, and if I tried to belt out a note, God would strike me down where I stood. I guess the guy playing Evan is the same one from the musical, so presumably he can, but he does this modern-day whimper singing, too. So in some scenes, he's got pipes like Rick Astin. Other times, he sounds like you should call the vet because there's a dying animal on the premises. I did feel sort of bad for Evan's mom because her child is lying to her more than a politician to their constituents. At the same time, however, I hate how Evan's social anxiety is used as a plot device instead of an inherent characteristic. After the crux of the story concludes, this problem is tossed aside like Star Trek's integrity. Also, who could ever believe Zoe falls in love with Evan? The lyric literally says, I have no reason to to like you. <laughs> Evan might as well glitter in the sun for all the stalking he does, but he placates to the emotion of the socially ignored with a nonsensical and forced relationship. That'll really build confidence in portraying a false reality of expectation. Also, am I supposed to believe someone like Evan would ever dare risk something so private and personal in public that someone could see? Dear Evan Hansen is through and through incredibly boring and bad. It fails on both fronts like the Romans in the Battle of Cannae. Evan's a sociopath that deserves no sympathy. This isn't a bittersweet tale of love and acceptance. It's a warning about raising your kids so that they aren't alone and depressed looking to harm themselves for attention. Also, why not to medicate your children because it will lead to the same results as giving antidepressants to a sugar glider. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then check out my take on the mind-numbing cop shop at the link over there, and I'll see you in the next video.